What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and we're here talking about episode six of the Halo TV show. And like always, we start off with our non-spoiler review, where we give the good, the bad, and our final rating. And in the second half of the video, we dive into the spoiler discussion, discussing the major plot events and either praise or rag on the overall episode itself. But before we jump into the review, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's start off with what we liked or what our good was for this episode. And to be honest with you, I think I felt that the, the introduction of the Spartan 3s was a really good look. Some of the combat scenes was was solid. I know the armors of these Spartan 3s were kind of, you know, look like they went to a dollar store and picked up any armor you can pick up for a Halloween, uh, I guess, Halloween kit for kids. Uh, but I felt like the the fact that now we're, we're, we're introducing new things for characters like Perez, who was obviously a character that we learned early on, and now she's given a better role. Granted, I think it's a little kind of rush for her to kind of change the character she was, being afraid of everything, to now being kind of like a badass in Spartan 3s. Uh, but I feel like it was kind of a good way to kind of give more insights about this about the story plot. And I felt like there were I feel like the pacing was a lot better compared to the last episode, which was dog water, if I was if I'm gonna be honest with everybody. Um but this one I thought they did a better job at least giving things out of importance. There were a lot more consistencies with this episode compared to the last one. Granted there's a lot of things you can kind of go into what we don't like about it, but I feel like the pacing was good. We got a lot of we got I mean simulation combat we, we got a lot of like kind of conniving things happening even with all different characters and the the plot they're going with with the i'm not going to go into it too much here but the plot that they're going with makes sense with what the story is at this point granted could i have done it differently yeah but i think for what they're trying to tell it makes sense so hockey what is a good thing you felt about this episode yeah i think the visuals were uh, pretty strong with this episode they've you know been pretty strong uh, throughout. So, um, you know, I would say that, that was probably the strongest part um, of the episode. I did like the opening part. Uh, you got to see the, the simulation uh, with the new Spartans and kind of Kai leading it as well. So that was also pretty good. But uh, once we get further into the episode and we'll kind of go into it, uh, there was a few things that I definitely liked and a few things that I would definitely change. Uh, but, you know, overall, I thought it was a, a solid episode. Angelica, what was your good here? Yeah, I thought it was a solid episode. Started off again strong with the Spartan 3s and their combat simulation and moving between kind of this first person view, uh, you know, facing the character and then in the mask where you kind of seeing things explode. And, you know, they did it kind of smartly because you could tell they couldn't show a full fledged simulation battle with, with different elites and stuff budget wise. So they did it a smart way where they're just showing you different camera angles. But it worked out, I thought, relatively well. And the, the players in this show, who I think are the top players uh, continue to shine. Cortana, whenever the Covenant is on screen, that is kind of like the highlights to me of this show, and, and they showed out again um, in this episode. Yeah, I feel like Cortana definitely is considered the best character. Even Akerson, I know that he's been kind of hit with a kind of a written problem, but at the same time, he does a pretty good job. Um, the, the Covenant characters, I think, are obviously the best things that we see on screen at this point. Um, but yeah, I thought the pacing overall, even just the combat scenes looks pretty good for what, what they were simulations, but they still looked pretty cool for what they had. better than the, uh, the sitting in the chair and the phone interview, like the, the interrogation yeah, lobby interrogation from, the, from the last season. I like this one better than that. Of course they have to be sitting down, but you know, whatever. But with the good, we have to talk about the bad and, and I'll be honest with you, the bad that I kind of felt about this was that they are kind of like pushing even further with some of the dumb plot lines that they were that they carried with them from the end of season one into into now really like the whole human versus not and i like that concept with spartans but i also kind of hate that it's almost like everybody other than than the master chief is being character like driven the way they are and then the master chief is like breaking every character kind of thought that he should be doing um, he constantly is is acting, you know, is that a soldier talking or is that the is that the girl I knew when I was a, when I was a kid? Like, like, dude, I mean, this is kind of like such breaking character. Like, you know, I just felt like there's so much that you could have done with this story plot. But the, I, there's just, just so many plot holes that there are still left that are, are still haven't been answered. Like, there's some there's a major plot hole that has not been discussed at the end of season one, and you guys probably already know what I'm talking about, 
they still haven't gotten the answer to. How? How is this, how is how is this one person alive? How is Maki living? They don't tell you. And I feel like that is something to me is as a fan of of just stories. I'm like, how do you not explain one of the major plot events at the end of season one and you still don't even know what happened? But you know, they, they they're leaving it, I guess, the final episode for us to find out what happened. Um, so I, I just plot holes on, on plot holes are still kind of piling up here. So that's that's kind of my bad. But Haki, what is your bad for this? I think it was just some of the missed opportunities. Um, you know, we, we did talk about kind of the simulations that that they showed us, um, but and not not to really get into the spoilers, but I didn't really get to see some actual real conflict between you know. Uh, the UNSC and the Covenant during this episode. And I think that was just a missed opportunity. When they showed me, you know, the simulation, you know, they, they showed me what they're able to do, but, you know, it was pretty much just a simulation. So that, I think they missed some some pretty key opportunities there. Yeah, and Angelica, what is your bad here? Um, yeah, I mean, they've answered some of the plot, um, which they did, which I think was good. So I'm not gonna rag too hard on the plot holes because in their world, although I would have done it differently, they did answer some questions as to why people have made certain decisions. Um, we'll dive into spoilers on whether they, they were good decisions or not, but they did at least answer some of them. But to me, it's it's a continued thing with Master Chief. And we have some viewers who have, we, week in and week out, try to talk about you know why Chief does what he does. And we're always very appreciative, by the way, of, of keep commenting yeah. videos and telling us your opinion. Um, I think our viewers are more talented, more forward thinking than than what Paramount Plus is actually doing with Master Chief, if I'm being honest. I think our viewers have like they're more creative than than what is actually going on, because I feel like Master Chief, we, he doesn't know what he what he is. He, he's he, there. All these other characters, we kind of have a good idea of, except him. We don't really know what he is. Um, and what path he's headed towards. That's the only thing, right? And and that's it's hard when that's your main character. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't know which Master Chief you're going to get this week. And I feel like that's kind of the problem. Like you'll get a glimpse, a, 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 a kind of slither of some solid character work. And then you get some garbage stuff that they just throw at you. I'm not saying that at any point this season that I feel that Master Chief is like going to be the Master Chief of old because you thought at the end of season one that's what was going to happen they kind of gave you that feeling and then what they do they axed that entire story arc with the cortana on his brain because they wanted to get rid of it because it was a dumb story arc that they made and you know that and then they just kind of get rid of that they just say all right well he's back to being his emotional self going to go see ai prostitutes and you know that's what he's going to go do now like you know they, they did that i'm not making that up any bs in that like these are things that you don't see chief doing in the games or in the books and i get it silver timeline and all that stuff but at the same time i said it last episode i said it again you want for game adaptation to follow your characters the right way so with that let's jump into our final verdict and when we jump into our ratings i'm gonna be honest with you this this episode is definitely better than the last one for me i feel like the last episode made made my balls itch made it just hurt my stomach watching some of the things that they were doing um, and it, it was just kind of like just hurting characters and just making even, uh, you know, Var G Gartani or Gartini made him look like a bitch when, when he's, you know, clinging to Maki's will. Um, that stuff bothered me last, last episode. This one is a little bit different. You, you got to see more conflict. You got to see more pacing is a little bit better. But at the same time, I'm also not going to like, right, you know, this is amazing. I can't wait to see the next episode just because there are some things that I'm still kind of concerned about the way and now granted they do explain some of the plot points that we were kind of waiting to hear about why um they do do that in their own way do we agree with it I I don't but I feel like all right well if you're going to explain it in your own universe I guess this is this is a mindset you could have and with that being said I'm going to give this probably a seven I feel like it's not the worst episode it's not the best one um, I think of so far out of the six, it's probably either five or four for me, uh, of where it's at. I feel like there are some really bad ones, but this is kind of in the middle, I guess you would say, close to the middle. So I say four, I say probably close to fourth, uh, fourth best, I guess you would say, of this season. Um, but yeah, I think they could push on and carry on uh, in a more positive way, but seven for me is what I'm thinking. So Haki, what is your rating for this? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much right near you. I'm at a 7.1. Um, I think, you know, the Quan and, and Maki storyline is kind of frail. It's been frail since the beginning. That's always been slowing kind of the show down. Um, the, the Kai and, and Chief interaction, I think, could have been better. And we'll kind of get into that um, <clears throat> in the next segment. But, you know, overall, the, the episode was fairly decent. But there was definitely some things that they could have done way better. Um, and just show me a little more actual conflict. And, and I think it could have been, you know, a pretty, pretty solid episode. But not too bad for this week. Angelica, what's your rating here? Yeah, I mean, for our movies and shows, our grades are 1 through 10 with 5 being average. And I think this was above average episode. I'm at a 7 flat. Um, again, they do some good things here. They answer some plot holes. And again, I might not have fully agree with it, but at least they're drawing up some things that would make sense, like you said, Marsman, on, on some of the mindsets that they would have when they kind of left that in the open for ex long periods of time. Now, do we agree with it? Not fully, but at least there's some sense made. And there's some of the stars like Cortana do I, that I really do think raises this up. And I know the Kai stuff, people are a little down on it. I thought Kai was strong in this episode too. Um, so I'm at a seven. I thought this was a, an above average episode. Yeah, and that's going to be it for our non-spoiler review. But what do you think about the Halo TV show so far? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We're now going to head off into our spoiler discussion, so we'll see you there. So now let's jump into our spoilers. And, and really simply put, I, I like to kind of talk about some of the major plot points that happen. And as a group, we're going to kind of analyze the biggest things that we saw from each section. So right off the bat, the first scene is that kind of it gives you like a sense of, oh, wow, we're going into combat mode. Spartan 3's first time, they kind of send them all in to go into to infiltrate a Covenant ship. And uh, I think one of the lines that just gets me kind of laughing right off the gate is, oh, check the corners, clear. And it's like, oh, only rookies say clear. And then the girl just gets destroyed. And you're like, that was the dumbest transition of writing I think I've ever seen. Like, there's no, like, you just said, check the corners. And then Lily Perez checks the corner. She says clear. And then you don't check your corner. You get clapped. And it's just like... Yeah, come, come on now like, it was just so stupid but, but like isn't that how they communicate in the military like do I, I don't think clear? spartans don't say anything like I, I, you know i don't think the spartan twos are like just like silent just walking through like that that's not how it works you can say clear it's okay um but then we find out this was actually just a simulation so they're, they're basically planning for an attack trying to go into a covenant ship and now we find out kai is now the captain of the spartan three she's actually now the kind of the, the mentor, the teacher for all these Spartan threes going forward. And, you know, she's obviously kind of a, you know, really upset. She goes to see Akerson and says, you know, these Spartan threes are not learning. They're not getting better. They're getting worse. And she's also upset internally because she keeps going to reach as a simulation and keep fighting Covenant there because she is internalizing that she was on reach, but everyone else is dead, according to what Akerson said. Uh, and they're using Chief almost like a martyr, having his face plastered all over posters throughout UNSC base, which obviously is um, I was kind of a messed up con concept because we all know that Chief is not there. Now, then we get a very interesting conversation between Akerson and Paragoski, uh, where they Paragoski finds out right away, oh yeah, Halsey and Chief are both alive, and Akerson's like, there's no shot. And she's like, well, it's the biggest, they're apparently it's the biggest man he's ever seen, and Halsey was seen 36 hours ago, and now they're like, oh crap, they're coming here. Um, and it was kind of just like in a very I, I, to me, I am still floored at the fact that Haragoski is now leading this whole thing. And she thought to herself, hey, you know what the best idea is? Let's keep Chief on the planet, let him die. And then that way we'll have full control over the situation and we can do whatever we want. A part of me is just like, I don't understand the meaning behind a, you know, UNSC official, ONI official, who they keep calling ONI for some dumb reason, but only official that you need to fight the covenant with your be best assets and your best asset is you're going to leave die like because of what you can't completely control him i mean i just don't understand that whole mindset you, you could do us so much better with that um I, I just i just don't get it but then we get into now uh, halsey is now in the base she's trying to basically find you know where you know help try to find what's over but she's trying to get into the base herself to try to you know do her own thing she's trying to get in to figure out what's going on so we there we find out that we're on a secret base called onyx and this is actually from the books this is from the games like i mean they don't really cover it in the games as much but 
there is this is known as one of the kind of only main bases that they have and basically they find out the soldiers are going after everybody um kai is possibly one of the worst secret agents i think i've ever seen instantly gets captured it's like oh, it, yeah, sorry yeah kwan that's the test kwan instantly gets captured she literally you know like in a video game where you're like oh there's a meter right right above their head say oh, have you been seen she's literally doing this outside to like let them all know that hey we're here. here um and she gets attacked he shows up he, he gets her free but then he gets rid of her, right and then all of a sudden now we're getting some weirdo stuff where kwan's just running away right and kwan jumps into a well right random well which i was like okay she's she, how is she not dead and then she she hits the gravity well and she's just on the floor. And then Halsey's there. And then magically Halsey's just walking in like, oh hey, what are you doing here? And it's just like, what? How? Where did Halsey get into this thing? She like, knows where well, she she's been. She knows there she's been there before. She memorized it from all these years ago. Um, but then, yeah, now those two are walking together. They're doing their whole thing while Master Chief is arrested. Um, and one of the best lines that Halsey says to Quan is, oh yeah, I remember you. You're the one that ruined Master Chief. Like he was dependable. He was. He was uh, he was disciplined. He was a soldier. He was, he was, good he was soldier. a soldier. He did everything he was told, and then he met you, and now he just sucks at everything. <laughs> he doesn't put his helmet on. Doesn't do any of that. And I was just like, it was like Halsey he was like, are. it was like me talking to her, like <laughs> because of you, Claude, you, you, you screwed up everything. You're all Son Halsey. of a bitch. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Halsey. You actually you did you did us all solid there. Um, and it's almost like this episode we got constant like. And if we were in the episode, because we're going to talk about a part later on, like that's also a thing that we would do if we were if we were in the show. Um, but I, I want to start off with like I want to see that discussion. The whole like the noble noble five noble five team, the the Quan five team that we have. Quan five. Um, the Quan five. What we have. Do you? Are, this whole kind of I guess sequence of events where Soren and his wife are looking for Kessler, and like like they know where the hell he is. Um, Quan is now with Halsey trying to go inside the base. Chief just says, screw it. I'm just going to go get arrested for some reason because it'll make it easier for me to get inside the base. D did you like this first kind of plot line with how they're doing this when it comes? I, I think it was not the worst. I think um, I think it makes sense. Like Chief can say, hey, I'll, I'll get captured. I thought it'd be a little better if he kind of like was more was was trying to like get Quan out of there and then them to make it into the base. Because Quan seems like she actually can fight now. Like she used to, wow. she's better. She's, she's clearly Rambo. assassinating no, people. Rambo. Get her a she's gun. using turret guns. Like, you know, Quan is capable. Like, I thought that maybe Chief and Quan would like be SEAL team duos and go in there and try to find out. But I mean, I didn't think it was a bad first sequence of that. I, especially with the, the simulation was pretty cool. And then, you know, I think they did a good job with that kind of setting the stage for a possible conflict that's going to happen between these two groups. What do you guys think about? Um, well, I'll say this. There, there was definitely good in there. The when Quan got sought out and Chief showed up, I thought that was a cool sequence in battling the UNSC soldiers. And he was trying not to kill them. As you can see, he was just beating them up and disarming them. Um, and he shot the guy in the knees, but he didn't finish him off. Right. And so he probably did that where he gave himself up. Um, to avoid attacking more UNSC soldiers. And they knew he was trying to get in the base anyway. So he goes in, you know, like I was actually okay with that. Um, the Soren, you know, finding his son, you know, it's just, it's weird because they're doing these Spartan threes um, in the previous scene where they showed them in a simulation and these are volunteers, right? But apparently they're still taking kids and making Spartans. And that's, that's what Chief and Soren talk about. So it's just this weird, why are they doing that part right and so that that's the that's that weird part that plot hole is still out there and then the parangoski with the control like do we for this is why we get the pushback and i know people come at us about like why aren't you giving this like a fair shot we are trying to but remember in the beginning when chief went awol the only reason he went awol is because he believed covenant was on the planet which he was right he was right and the the leadership knows he's right so the only reason that he went off control is because you you didn't believe him that the covenant was there so if you just accept that yes he was right and chief we need you to be the the master chief for humanity not for us like how do you can't get that under control like he's not some loose cannon like because of his love for Maquis. Right now, he's right now he's a loose cannon because he got betrayed by UNSC. So 
The reason why he's hunting you is because you left him on the planet because you said he can't be controlled. That's the part that is gnawing at this whole this whole plot is why are we here? Why are we here? Why do we have Chief hunting the UNSC? And he thinks he's going to, what, kill two high-ranking officials and Oni? Like, I don't get it. Why, why are we at this part? Yeah, uh, you, uh, what do you he's think? He's supposed here? to be the, you know, the savior of, uh, of humanity, and then they kind of just, uh, you know, are putting everything on the backs of Spartan threes and, and not, you know, using one of their best assets, you know, which is that, that plot is kind of a little shaky. And then the whole Quan, uh, you know, uh, storyline, at least in this episode kind of pissed me off. And, uh, Marcelio, you, you had went over it kind of, we all felt like Halsey there kind of pretty yeah. much telling, uh, yeah. Quan that she's pathetic and doesn't really, you know, she's a variable that doesn't really mean anything. And she kind of messed up chief, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, so, I mean, those, those two plots are kind of shaky and they have been the whole time, but, um, again, the, the, the episode, um, was pretty good. And I think, you know, for, for this, at least this half, um, you know, that simulation was probably one of the best, uh, aspects of this episode. So I, I did like the simulation. Yeah. I feel like the, uh, the annoyance behind what my anger is towards this episode is all about the fact that none of this makes sense. Like if you were you know, like Legilicule like kind of said it where it's like, all right, well, you, you're you're mad that Chief found out the information. You're, I guess your control is you want to keep that under wraps. You don't want the public to know that the Covenant's here, right? So you keep everyone stable. Okay, I get that. You could then reiterate the Chief like, hey, I know the Covenant's here, but we're trying not to break panic. We're trying to set up a plan. If you tell Master Chief the plan, I don't think he's going to go and blab it to the AI prostitute. I don't think, I know he's an idiot, but I don't think he's that dumb. All right. So if you kept Chief in the loop, then it would make more sense. It would make more sense to why they're doing this. But they didn't. Right. And then on top of that, it's just like, okay. So clearly the simulation showing that these Spartan threes are garbo sauce, right? They're, they're bad. They're failing the basic of missions of just getting into the main hub of the ship. Right. If you had Spartan twos do it, maybe then that probably wouldn't have been a problem. Right. I think that's kind of what makes it hilarious to me is like, so you're depending now on a random soldiers with armor and then they can do it, even though like they are proving that they are barely can do it. So it's kind of like annoying to me why that makes sense to anybody. Why well, I, I get it. Like I, People can have their own opinions and there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like for me, it's like, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like that doesn't make sense. Now, we then transitioned to the Arbiter, and I feel like one of the cool things about this was that he was marking the kind of his dishonor on his chest. He like searing it into his chest. It's almost like it's supposed to be like a daily thing he's supposed to do. I guess that's part of now. They, they kind of changed a little bit, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But it seems like every day he has to like mark his chest where with the this mark of dishonor. Uh, where in the Arbiter from the games, they, they scarred him heavily. They put a giant ass like searing on his chest that will never be unbroken right and i feel like that was kind of like of a difference but either way i thought that was cool and then then we see maki almost getting slapped around by this elite priest which is a new character that we have not been seeing. we have not seen really any elite characters that are any different this entire time really actually have their own character basically we had the first season we had some random grunt which you barely knew about um but this priest basically is saying hey you know maki is not loyal I don't trust her. Why don't we just kill her? Which is like something that I was thinking this whole time too. Like, why don't we just, why don't just wipe her out? Um, he was thinking, say what I was thinking. Um, and then the arbiter is like defending her, like, no, like she, we need her right now. Like, and he, he's like, trust me, if if I find that she's not loyal, then I'll kill her myself. Like, and and he's like, well, well he's, and he also said, this is the hierarch's decision. This is not my decision. This is what the hierarchs want with her, and it's not my kill to make. And he's like, well. Uh, he's like, when we go back, then if we if the hierarch said we kill her, then he's like, I can't wait to kill her. And I'm like, solid, right? That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, and then right? he says, when are we going back? And he says, yeah, soon. he doesn't have, he yeah. says soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. So it was kind of like you see a pretty solid dynamic between these yeah. two. Now, what I, I know for people who are, are super fans of the of the of the lore, there were a lot of elites that were connected to the religion too. Like that was the whole purpose of why the elites were were so gun ho on the covenant was because they and the the hierarchy, those those aliens, they were the first few to create the covenant. So that was kind of like that was always around, and, and even in the games, they had like the the senators, like the council, like right? they were they were part of the. It's a council of aliens that all have their they're part of the, of this religion. So 
I thought that was a pretty cool thing that we finally get to see that. Um, now, it gets better for the, the Marines. Perez, Liza is now kind of taking the lead a little bit. They are successful. But one of the interesting things that happened is that when they finally succeed, there's no gunfire. Like, so she's just like, it's, it's kind of shocking. There's no, no one's attacking us now. And it's a very, no one really gets it until later on. But it's kind of like, it's almost like they're, they're, the simulation's not about just getting to the, to the ship and taking over its control. But it's almost just like, that's, that's all you're going to be doing, right? That's, and they, Perez kind of picked up on it. Nobody else did. They're all just like, oh, let's just get out of here. And then she was like, that was way too easy. That whole time we were struggling, but then it was the easiest thing ever to get off. Um, so that was a really good point. I think they did a good job with Chief easily gets out of the prison cell. That was the easiest breakout I think I've ever seen. It reminds me of the Captain America thing again. Like at this time, at least they, they put several soldiers and they put them into like chains. Like yeah, yeah. I was happy that they did something smart with that. But I was like, it just reminded me of that. He was just beating the crap out of everybody with chains and stuff. Um, so I was like, that's it makes sense. But because of that, Ackerson then just says, hey, uh, Kai, you see how Chief's clapping all my soldiers right now? Does he seem like he's the same guy to you? Maybe he he wants some of those Maki cheeks some more and maybe he's a bad guy. And Kai doesn't want to believe it. I think that's at least I was I was happy to see that Kai wasn't just a complete moron. And internally, you can see that she actually like was like questioning like it doesn't make sense. Like why yeah, is it technically, that technically technically when Ackerson said that you know Maki was on reach and Chief got off reach, so they could be working together. Maki did technically save Chief on yeah, reach. He did. So yeah. it's did. not the most outlandish thing. I know to us it feels outlandish, but in that story, story mode. Yeah. in that story mode, like in that story that they've designed, it is a believable. Thing that actually yeah. is trying to sell yeah it, it does make sense for their story i'm not gonna lie like hey yeah. you know what you if you were because now i think that a good sparse scene was that the whole between Ackerson and paragotsky you know Ackerson kind of seems like somebody that is like unsure about this plan like uh, he he himself seems internally struggling with what they're doing because i feel like he also kind of sees that you know what i might not like halsey i might not like the spartan twos but they are they are weapons. Like we could use them, and now we're, we're we're setting, we're setting, trying to set up a thing. Say the Master Chief is a traitor, and we got to get Kai to go kill him, and all that stuff. So now it's like even he was like struggling with trying just to convince her because he's like, now he does he does convince her, and now Kai is going to go set off and, and basically try to go go take down the Master Chief or arrest him. Now and then it goes back to um to to the Covenant. And now Cortana is trying to help find the artifact and helping Maki trying to do this. And she, she's talking to one another about, hey, you need to get me like off the ship. And then I can go and try to get the artifact and try to set this plan in motion. And then we find out Maki lost her power somehow. We don't explain how. We don't even explain how Maki's alive. She doesn't have the power anymore. Um, so we don't really fully understand what the reason is. And, and now it makes me, I'm not going to say it makes me don't, not like Maki less or anything, but the whole thing of Maki making sense of trying to keep Chief alive so yeah. that she can get to the ring, at least that to me makes it sense. Makes more sense. Yeah. It makes more sense because I I know they're gonna pull in the whole Maki loves Chief. They had they had sex one time, they, they barely knew each other, but they love her each other, whatever. But it makes more sense to keep him alive because so even every time she says don't kill him, it actually makes sense now why does, not to yes. kill him. Now because those goes. whole times, it made zero sense why she kept making them stay alive. The only thing we knew at that point was that Maki wanted some more ass clapping, right? That's all we that's all we could assume. But now it makes actually some sense of what they were doing with that. Um, and then we go, and then we get to the to the Halsey Quan arc where they're going through the caves, and then you know Quan is constantly seeing this old lady shaman, the all the time to find the way to get in under under the Oni base to get where all the researchers are. And then we see he's arrive again, right? Miranda Keys is back. He's been in Oni's on the Onyx base this whole time researching. We got a little mother daughter squabble for some really dumb stuff about what you think you're, you're the only one researching this stuff. Like, oh my God, I really don't care about this. Like we're not trying to introduce another, like it was almost like a Halsey, but like, oh, you know what? Your dad's dead. Like, yeah, how about that? <laughs> You know, it's just like yeah, yeah. we didn't even, we didn't even just, get to that. We I know. Like, get to it was just like we, we like it was just it was just kind of like a little uh, ridiculous. But uh, 
But I, then we get probably the best scene of, of the, the episode, which was the Kai versus Master Chief scene. This was probably the best one that kind of made me like the episode a little bit more because a lot of the stuff wasn't bad. The the Covenant stuff was great, but everything else was kind of like just like no, it was just no, yeah, it was all right. right. But yeah. this was the good scene because I think the talk that they had beforehand, Chief just says they took our armor, they left us to die, and you weren't there, right? And he was kind of throwing Kai under the bus a little because he's saying like, while you were off here, we were dying and we lost Vanek. Briz is retired, like, and Keys is dead. Like, we, we, we lost everything, right? And where were you? You were here, right? And and basically, it was just kind of like a, a really good scene because then Kai is struggling internally about this too, right? Um, I think it was it was a well written. It was a good fight, good fight. Kai claps the crap out of Master Chief, and I think what's great about this is it makes it just makes us feel like we were punching the crap out of Master Chief. It feels like I was in Kai's <laughs> body and I was just like put your helmet on and just beat the shit out of him. Just put your goddamn armor <laughs> on your <laughs> just, just, beat the, the, just beat the hell out of him because it's like clear as day like if he actually had armor it would I wish they both had armor. Oh, I wish well, I wish Chief cool. I wish That's Chief I like yeah. I wish Chief was like you know what I need to do first Find my get damn my armor. armor. Get my armor. Get my armor, and then I can take care of business. And then if once he gets his armor on, that's when Kai shows up. Yeah. And then they have a Hell showdown. Yeah. And now, and to be fair, Chief, I know people are going to say in the comments, we know Chief was damaged, right? He's still recovering from the reach wounds. Um, so he wasn't at full sure. percent. But you saw the difference matter. between an armored, armored Kai versus not armored Chief, and that's what we see. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of the thing. And the hockey, I know you wanted to say something about this part. Oh, no, yeah, that, I mean, that was that was exactly what I was going to say it was, um, you know, I was talking about missed opportunities. I think this was the biggest missed opportunity in this episode is why did Chief not find his armor before, uh, you know, the, the fight scene? Uh, I, I thought everything else was was fairly good. I, I thought, um, you know, the elites and Maki, other than, you know, the general story being kind of dumb, I thought uh, kind of like when Angelica said, they, they definitely kind of, you know, hit it on the head when they uh, show the elites and everything. But, um, yeah, just a missed opportunity with Kai versus Chief. Um, I wish that, you know, Chief had his armor. If he did have his armor, man, I, I thought it would have been a lot better. You know what? I, I, now, granted, I think this would have been cool is if you gave Chief his armor, I think you could have made Chief win the fight and you could have made it where he was beaten too. Like, he was beaten because it was like, you can give him that, like, Kai has to lose, but I think it could be more equal. And that they both yeah. were pretty, pretty hurt. And then, like, Chief yeah. is by himself. And it made and, sense, Chief getting his ass kicked. No, in this because sense, in this sense, he's injured he gets his, he's, and he doesn't yeah. have his armor. Yeah, oh, I, 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 even, I even, I even, if they had yeah. armor and you made Kai win, because yeah. and you could make it I'm shoot cool clearly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like at the end of the day, like he's still hurt, so like it makes sense. And and at the end of the day, like I think just have, them having armor just would have been better all around. Like it clearly. Like what they chief just like say I'm not going anywhere and just constantly just get berated with punches and, and elbows. And you know what? That was the one moment that I actually felt, you know, like that was a master chief moment. Yeah. Was him just constantly getting up, even though he's getting his ass kicked and, and yeah. guys trying to tell him like stay down, and he won't stay down, right? And like that's the good stuff. The not so good stuff is when he's trying to convince her like, hey, you're, like you're not just a Spartan. You know, like, who's the girl I grew up with? Like, this is in the, that moment, right? And don't be a soldier for them, right? Like, where where does the Spartan thing end? And and Kai's like, I know who I am. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a Spartan. I know who I am. And, like, that was the best aspect. That's where Kai, like, again, I think Kai's pretty well so. written. Shoots up my chart because that's the thing that we need Chief to learn is not that he likes Perengoski or Ackerson. Right, he needs to be the master chief of humanity, right? Because they're fighting a covenant that is far greater than any threat they have, right? So, and you can't kill in plain daylight two top UNSC officials. So I don't, yeah. I don't understand. Like that's the, what's thing. the plan. What's the plan here? Like you what's what the mean? plan like... here, right? Like what's the plan here? And that's the thing. It's just you know, it was a good scene, and like Kai, you know, like Mars said, it was like it felt like. The hardcore Halo guys watching, like, put, become Master Chief and just beat the hell out of them. 
But this, like this just scares me um, for for next episode. Though. I mean, is he is he gonna find his armor? Uh, yeah. For this episode. You I know? mean, there's two episodes left, right? Yeah. It's got to be so, this. I mean, one. is he gonna actually get in his armor? Are we gonna actually see a battle with Master Chief in his armor fighting the Covenant? I mean, this is. I mean, know, it, it, this year has been better, but uh, the battle scenes from season one might be better than than what we've seen in season two. So. I mean, we've seen we've seen him more in his armor in season one, season two, which is obviously yeah. crazy to me. Crazy. Um, now, I guess the last, really, the last few things that happen here um, is that obviously after this fight, Kai is gonna go right to Ackerson and be like, "Hey, he didn't have his armor. He didn't have his armor. What's the point of doing all this if, if that's what our main goal is?" And you know, he was trying to basically say, "Like, hey, we knew the risks. We knew what we had to do." And we had to make decisions. We can't control everything, right? And it was almost kind of like he was trying to, like, kind of push it onto somebody else, basically. It was almost like we can't, like, not even him. He can't control everything either. But I think then we get to the probably the, uh, the one of the better parts is Cortana makes his connection to the ship, right? Uh, to, to Onyx base, right? And, and she has it off the ship. She makes that connection. And she now arrives with Perengotsky. And Paragoski says, I want the room. We find out the reason why Paragoski left Cortana to on Reach was in the hopes that she would be captured. Now, the only thing that this doesn't make sense to me is that how do you know that they're get that they're coming for her? I know in the games that was their plan to go after Cortana and get Cortana. One of, at least one of their plans. Um, so I wish they were to explain it more for the for the viewer. Like, yeah, me as a loser gamer lore guy. I know this because that was what the game was kind of even the game didn't even tell you you just kind of knew like they why they keep going after these scientists why did they go after this because they wanted the cortana chip right that's what they wanted because they knew that cortana had like advanced systems that were that could really learn everything about the human race and everything along those lines so they get yeah, like ex please explain that a little more that the cortana that they're after cortana it makes more sense if you tell us or at least show us in that way but because of that, Paragos's yeah, plan... Yeah, remember when the Elite, the Arbiter, before he continued Mars, he said, what is that to Maquis? Only Maquis knew of Cortana. Yeah. Right? yeah. So even the Elites didn't know. Well, Maquis is the one that went after Cortana and brought the Arbiter with her. So, right? So, like, that's... The Arbiter didn't know what that was, and she said human intelligence. Right? So that... He didn't even know until just recently what that is. Yeah, I mean, just feel like you could have done a little bit more to explain, like, why... Even Maquis, like, what, why? Because I know Maquis did see Cortana when she was with Chief and all. But like, mm -hmm. what makes what makes them know that Maquis wants to go after Cortana? Like, there's no there's no real indication of that, right? So the whole plan though was that for Cortana basically to constantly give information about the Covenant, and so that they could try to use it as a means as an advantage to try to attack the Covenant. And Cortana straight up says, after every simulation I've ran, even if with this knowledge. You're still going to fail. Like, and she's like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Like, all that stuff. And we find out pretty quickly that Kai, when Kai goes to talk with Ackerson, that the simulation that they're running was a suicide mission. That basically this was a one way trip, that these Marines, the whole goal was to get to the center to then basically almost like turn, I guess, for the engines to basically turn for them to turn off the shields and then they could just nuke the crap out of the ship well, and not even that they also got easier right so they kept failing and then they loosened it up yeah Ackerson to, to get a win and yeah. they said Ackerson did that to give them hope so you know like because they don't want them going into this supposed no one they're gonna die yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No one and, gonna and it was just kind of like uh it, it was kind of like one of those scenes where it it just makes me kind of wonder even more like the whole the whole let chief die it just doesn't make sense if you need him to fight the covenant you're having these unexperienced soldiers do it like there's no reason for that and then it kind of ends with with now cortana is guiding chief through the bases and it's kind of funny because she's like chief i need you to get up now and he's like oh he's like well my key and he's like well he gets up like <laughs> he rises oh like God, the undertaker he gets up gets up like perfectly um he gets I up the worst line is like she's like you know you're the 
Like, what do you want me to do? Chief. And she's like, you're the, you're the master chief. No, yeah. not anymore. Says, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And those are those moments yeah, where, like, <laughs> where you're like, like every, every single dude, episode. that was one of the moments where I was like, wow, dude, this episode got <laughs> way worse for me. Wow. This, this episode are, just, idiot. yeah, like, uh, I don't understand. Every episode, every episode, what they do is at the end, they just throw a nugget to piss you off. They always do that. They just, like, you're the master chief, though. Like, no, I'm not. Like, well, well, I wish I, mean, I, I, wish, he, I wish he, Katana, he I wish uh, right. I wish Cortana yeah, just, just like bro turn into it. Turn I wish into the magic I wish I wish Cortana just like went off on him, just started cursing a storm and just like you're <laughs> you're such a piece of piece of garbage, you piece of trash, bitch ass. Like get your bitch ass up. You I just kill wish <laughs> I just wish I just wish she just went off on him because it was just it's like come on, dude. And now he's walking through. No no problem. Cortana's opening all the doors, locking all the other doors, so he can't get attacked. Lucky. I think what right. no and then. <laughs> yeah, no, no, well, that's what go. I th yeah. So yep. then, Chief, I think one of the best things is that Pablo does the uh, does he the, wave. Yeah, does does the like, wave, yeah. wave to us. Oh, yeah. uh, I was like, oh god, I hate this. I hate this so much. And then gets the last scene where uh, basically the priest is like, he's like, yeah, there there was a signal that was sent to somewhere else, like from the ship. And he's like, what? And even the arbiter was kind of looking at her like, are you betraying me right now? Like after everything I did, and and she's like, no, you have to. I'm the blessed one. You gotta believe. It's like I hate I hated that whole plea, but Arbiter then like okay, so then he's like, all right, anyone that stands by me, like your honor will be intact, and you know we'll stand together to to get to the ring, and then basically he goes after the priest, and they're there. It's a whole brawl between the mutiny, yeah, yeah mutiny, full on civil war, or um, civil war within yeah. the ship or between the priest group and and obviously the Arbiter's group, and Maki is just slow slowly crawling <laughs> to the thing, and now it's surprisingly getting charged up. Now, we don't understand whether it's because Chief is getting closer to the thing or she's got her powers back. Who flipping knows, right? Well, we all we do know is that they both touch it. We called this. What's crazy is we were um, in, in the past few episodes, we called that they would have to do the whole like this to get into the to get into the thing and turn it on. And it turned on. All right, and now so it's on. Touch at the same time, yeah, right? the touch at the same time. We I called it. I think we I think I was the one that said it. I think they they both touch it and then the episode ends right and so I just want to get your opinions at the last part before we close this out but I feel like the the whole I'm not the master chief anymore line pisses me off but I think it maybe is because he's not I'm not in my arm right I'm like dying I can't I, what he's just feeling sorry he for no himself in the UNSC. yeah so probably no, yeah, our viewers are gonna let us know a whole mix of. It's gonna lower the this book right. said this one <laughs> thing. whole reasons why um, that this is correct. And again, we appreciate your opinion, but it's just like, bro, you're a Spartan for humanity, for humanity that we have a war. And even he got angry. Like we talk about the Maquis and we make jokes that way. But then she brought up I'm with the Arbiter. And he that's when he also perked up. Like, where is he? A guy who killed Vanek. Yeah, so like that. that yeah. Like that's we you're for humanity. It's yeah. not for UNSC. And maybe we get there in the next episode. That's probably what happens. You know what it is? Finally, the epiphany that, oh, I need to fight for humanity and win against the Covenant, not for Parangoski, right? For whatever. But it's just the, I want to fast forward. That's the problem. It's like, I'm looking to fast forward to that part. Yeah, I, I, I want <laughs> yeah, to I want to uh, get to the part where where they're like everyone's cool. Like everyone, are, are yeah. we cool now? Are we cool now? Here's your armor. Let's fight go the ahead and wear it. Yeah, wear the armor. The UNC, go go the fight the go fight yeah. the covenant now. We're cool now. Like just just go just go do it. Because at the end of the day, like I rather I rather we get all this dumb crap out now than have to like stomach it when the real best parts of the story come around. Like and my only thing is that that's called hopium. The hopium is that they are cool and that they do can follow the story of the first game and they do follow that because up to this point they have not provided me enough hopium for me to think that they're actually going to follow Halo not 1's game. All. Like if I was making a bold take with a bold prediction, I think it's going to be Maki joins the side of the good guys against the Covenant, right? And now we got Maki on on Quan Six, Quan Squad Six is now going to be with Maki yeah. joining the squad, and it's just going to get me more more frustrated because. It just doesn't make sense. Just follow the, can, just follow the first game. From yeah, here. Can I just say this, guys? When the covenant comes on, like that's the best part of it's the best part of the show. Yeah. This whole elite, even with the priest who we didn't even know, I yeah. loved that aspect. 
yeah. of this episode. Even though I don't know the character, and as a as a gamer, we didn't really see elite priest. Even though we knew that they were part of high charity, that they had a higher up noble group. But I liked it. Those are the deviations that I can because that like there's something there to enjoy. Yeah. And Cortana, to me, is the best character in the show. Yeah. I'm just gonna say that right. I think Cortana is the best character. He's been the most consistent written character in the show. She's her and Halsey become the most consistent characters this whole time. And I like I like Ackerson. It's just that problem with Ackerson is that his writing is now is getting he's getting tainted by writing. And he started off very hot. And, yeah, very, uh, very good writing for him. And then they're kind of tainting him with this whole Paragoski, I need control, I need order type of bull crap. And, you know, I just feel like he's get, he's getting hit with that. I feel like he's still a good character. Um, I don't know. Like, it's hard to tell. I, I want to see what they do next episode for the reason to see what's their next pathway because they need to settle this problem. Kessler needs to be found. Like, we all know the Kessler needs to get yeah. found because if we don't, we don't find Kessler that it's gonna go season three. We're not knowing where Kessler is. Oh, Kessler's on the ring. We gotta go find Kessler oh, on the ring. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, it's just like something. He's on the ring first, actually. Yeah, he's uh, he's already on the ring. <laughs> so, we, so we have to go to the ring. The ring <laughs> yeah. So we we like we just need to get that story plot done with. I, Soren, he's, uh, Soren he's I, retired. I love you, man. Yeah, yeah but you gotta retire. You guys can go live happy ever after. Yeah, go like go live. Yeah, go go on that planet That's where Riz sad. retired. Yeah. Go over there and just. Have you know? Have a great, great time. Just and, and even Maki, go retire. Go go to the same planet with Riz and everyone. And Quan, yeah, go dude. over there too. You still yeah. everyone. Just, yeah. Everyone retire Riz. Retire. And let's get to the main start. Yeah, just never get just off. Brand never new. get over there. <laughs> Chief, put your armor on. Where's the Where's the lock on this thing? Lock it on mm-hmm. his body. Just keep it on. Padlock. You know? Padlock it on yeah, his body. Lock. Just like just keep it on and just have Halo One story now. It's just at least just then. At it. least if they were to do that, I. I would find a way to just be like, all right, that's pretty. Like, I, I'll enjoy the rest of the show if they were to find a way to like keep the Halo and, One and story. Again, we want the to match stories, but it doesn't have to be exact. No, just, but like at least like got, is, like, follow Chief follow a and, a, yeah. a, a yeah, silver close. timeline version of close this here. that yeah. makes sense. I think that's I think what something that makes sense to me. Focus something. That's yeah. the word. Focus. Yes. UNSC just, versus the cover. Be consistent. Be be. Be consistent, be stable. Don't don't start throwing curveballs at me that Maquis the arbiter now and all that crap. Like that's still that's still on the table. That is still on the table. We on uh, the bingo card, yeah, that's still on there, right? I think we we made a lot of bold predictions on this channel of on the, on the story plots. Um Frank, I think Legilica, you said that Maki being no, the arbiter. Sure. Yeah, yeah uh, you said really, you said relationship. I said he would be he she would the be arbiter. the arbiter. Yeah. You'd be the arbiter. I think my bingo card's still there. Um, I I'm I see it. It's still a possibility. Uh, there's no but, way they have sex again, dude. <laughs> there's there's, no there, there's got to be a cargo hold somewhere Never on this. Ever, there's, 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 a, there's, there's there's a prison cell somewhere on this base. <laughs> you find right. somewhere. No, 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 it's be comfortable. Be comfortable. Uh, but what do you listen? At the end of the day, guys, if you if you disagree with us, if you do agree with us, you're more than more than welcome to comment below and let us know what you think if you don't like what we're saying tell us why we are more than happy to have you know some discussions on our comments uh we've we always implore our, our viewers to kind of talk it out with us uh yeah we're all halo fans we're also fans of sci-fi so we kind of give our, our kind of varied perspective when it comes to you know what we think about the show and not so let us know what you think in the comments below but if you do like this type of content make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel and shares are appreciated so share it to anyone that you know will like this type of content as well. But until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys.